Hey everyone, it's Joe from The Automator, and we're going to cover what we automated this week with AutoHotKey. Let me uh, share my screen here, pull up Prompt Assist, oh, let me actually change my DPI. Alright, we bumped it up, and Prompt Assistant to recently modified files. So it's looking on my B drive, which is the fake drive of stuff that we share with the other people at The Automator. Um, client work, again, several radiologists, so this one guy, Danny, doing a lot of stuff for him. Mostly regular expression matching for his text to, to move stuff around properly. That's what we've been tweaking that with, with PowerScribe and his PAX tool. Um, the HK Toolkit. Okay, don't tell Isaiah, but um, since Claude now offers up good V2 code, um, I'm having Irfan try to convert his toolkit to V2 just for fun. So... Um, we're playing with that. We weren't telling his ass because I want to surprise him, but we ran out of um, some bandwidth of using the tool because we're not a paid customer yet. But if you haven't tried it, Claude is amazing at converting stuff. So um, we're switching them over um, little little by little, each one of the files, breaking it up. So your project, clicking mouse button. Um, with voice access, the uh, I learned you can long press the tool. Let me start it and I'll show you here. So it's going to kick off here up here. We see, yeah. So if I if I click this once, it'll it'll be listening. But I don't want to be. Um, so I'll say command mode. So switch to command mode. Now it only matches off of what I have. And we have a script that shows you, which I'm not going to launch our um, voice access script to help build the stuff. But what I learned was if you long press this. It will mute the microphone without switching out of command mode. Um, so you can long press it. That I can click it once. It'll turn it back on, but it stays in command mode, which is great because otherwise you get kicked out of command mode when you do certain things. And so I hated that. I didn't want it always listening to me. So this is going to be our solution. What we were testing was how to press that. The problem is this voice access is elevated um, using UI, ac um, UI access. Yeah, the, uh, the UIA, not... Not UIA from automating programs, but there's a third level of there's the admin mode and the user mode, and then there's this UI access mode, which is sort of elevated. Uh, so we were testing some stuff, and we couldn't quite get it to work properly, and we're trying not to run elevate our scripts running them uh, admin. So we're trying to, to come up with different approaches, one of which Isaiah proposed was using a send or a post message here. And so that's what I was testing with that. Um, what we did notice on some other stuff when we were testing it was we could get it to highlight it, but if I move my mouse over it, then it would work with the send or post message. So um, we need, there's probably something with a hover, you know, a hover event or something we have to trigger as well. Now that wasn't actually on this, that was on both the HK Toolkit and Site for Auto Hotkey, or I was just testing things of how it works. So that's what that was. Wordmart, one of the clients wrote me and just said he was doing stuff with V2, trying to use stuff, use a com object, and how is it different? I'm like, it's really not. And he just had, a, he was connecting to the wrong object, if I remember correctly, uh, when he was trying to use it. So uh, we got that set up. But com is a great way to automate programs like Word and Excel and PowerPoint, um, Outlook, and even other programs like SPSS as a com object. A lot of programs have, you'd be surprised, have com objects. And when they do, that's a great way to do it. With Claude, we're working on creating an API to be interacting with it. That's how we were going to get around the bandwidth issue because um, you can pay per API call. And, and so far, Irfan was testing a lot with the API, and he spent like $2.20, and he was testing a lot with it. So uh, it's it's really not expensive. Um, the, the, these are some of the testing he was doing with that. Open AI. So Isaias was updating our Open AI uh, API call class object, which once we do, we'll update the download for it. There is one there, but right now I think it's broken because it, for whatever reason, uh, OpenAI keeps changing their API, and uh, it's it's really surprising. We've never run into that before. Usually they're very stable, but uh, you know, given the thing is so new, this approach is so new, they're changing it, uh, which is weird. Most places will leave it there and they give you a new version, but they don't deprecate the old one and make it where it doesn't even work. Uh, that's what they're doing, so it's annoying. Um, this quick raw edit, this is a great script, which I, I really didn't like um, the tool. Let me see if I can, oh, no, it's alt, alt clicking it, I think launches it. Oh, that jumps into edit. This will be the updated version, not the original version. This is the newer version where we're not using the built-in um, 
object we're building our own because if you would hit stop before it would screw up the timing of where you were and it really drove me nuts so i can drag a video in here um, and no matter the length i can quickly crop it um and just take a consecutive area uh, and be done in a couple seconds like it's really wild at how fast because it just crops it uh, and you're done very quickly so hopefully this week that one will be done um, we have several ffmpeg tools this one rips off the metadata because uh, they'll have like titles and other descriptions and stuff that I don't want to have on it. But we'll have those. Hopefully they'll be paid like probably five ninety nine or so for each one. Uh, but lots of cool little tools there. Um, HK Toolkit V two. I this is the this is actually the work Irfan's doing in converting it to V two. So there's that. Um, GUI function run CMD. So we were on the hero call and someone mentioned trying to interact with the command prompt and i mentioned this um run cmd library which um i thought it was Luxicos, but it wasn't and i forget who the author was but uh it, it has an object that allows you to work with the command prompt and do lots of cool stuff get the um standard out and other th things it's really really cool the notify i think we updated one of the examples because um oh yeah Dale on the hero group was asking, how do you make it close the, you know, programmatically closed? He wanted to close all of the notifications, and um, Irfan showed how you can programmatically have it close the last one that's built into the class. So um, that notify class is really cool. It allows you to show lots of cool stuff on the screen, notify your users, even play sounds. Um, you can have it do it in this monitor or whichever monitor you want in the different corners or in the center. Very cool tool. Um, pretty links updated so this tool let's see yeah, i can i can launch that so this has um, a search tool now this tool connects to our sqlite database i didn't really want to share that because that would be horrible if someone had access to that because they could really screw up the automator and do stuff so I, we don't give people access to that however this tool now if i hit refresh goes and writes another tool this automate automator resource finder um, and let me see if Let me open that and launch that. So this tool, which will look somewhat similar, but you can search and say, let's say, um, click, and here are different th things that have resources. So there's videos, there's auto hockey V1, V2 help, or you can filter. So I just want V2 help, or I want any downloads mentioned, click. Um, I just recorded a video with Isaiah, on so a really cool tool. Um, or other, so yeah, so this tool will be available um, we'll probably sell that one as well because it's 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 badass. I don't know how else to say it. It's so cool, uh, but allows you to very quickly find resources that we've done or on um, on our downloads or videos or the auto hockey documentation. So there's lots of really cool stuff there. Um, this tool we use Mailgun for our emails, and some people they come in, they will unsubscribe from our emails, and then they then they go buy something, and then they say, hey, I didn't get the email for how to download it. I'm like, well, you unsubscribed. So I have to go update them, and I update them both on the unsubscribe suppression list on Mailgun, which requires a login and a lot of steps, and then I have to go to the automator and change their email um, subscription flag there. So it was a tedious process. So Isaiah, um, we just this morning finished that step where I can pull up this tool, type in a thing, see if it's on the list, so I know very quickly, oh, yeah, he's on the suppression list, I can tell him, and actually, I have a button I can click, and it, and it writes the email for me and says, hey, you're actually unsubscribed on this date, are you saying you'd like to be resubscribed? So I don't have to do that. Um, also, I can hit a button and say, okay, well, change their subscription status, and it goes and updates them on Mailgun and on the automator for me, um, so I don't have to worry about that, so that'll save me a lot of time. Uh, this is what we use to get the active subscribers so who's um subscribed for the newsletter so i can i can pull that and pull different people uh, so that's that database looks like Isaiah made a couple changes to the database tool um and the mail gun and so same overall stuff there's nitty-gritty of it the text under mouse that's a really really cool tool um it allows you i think Irfan said he noticed something weird on it so it allows you to get the text under your mouse with using UIA. So he's he made a little tweak to that, to this tool, which I'll, I'll put the link up here. But um, the slug is just text under mouse, I think. But it's very cool. Um, this resizable GUI, 
you can easily create resizable GUIs in AutoHotKey. Um, we also have, by the way, have a great intro to GUIs course, which I'll try to put the link up here. And um, GUIs, especially in V2, they're, they're objects and they're so much easier to work with. So I highly encourage you to switch to V2. Check out the GUIs, they're really, really cool. Um, this was more working with the voice access. I was telling you about that earlier. And um, something to do with the preferences. Now, I'm surprised it's not in this list. Irfan, which I don't know why it's not. Um, Irfan's been working on a class. Trigger class. I'm sorry, I missed it. These, which is really cool. Um, actually, I don't know. Example. Let me see if I can pull that up and run it. I'm not sure what it's going to do here. No, I don't know. Oh, well, it's running. Anyway, um, it allows you to very quickly write your own tools for choosing hot keys and hot strings. So it will build. You can easily decide, do I want to have a mouse, a keyboard, a hot string, or just disable this thing altogether, right? So I'm going to say a mouse, and then when you choose mouse, oh, do I want it contact sensitive? Yeah, let's make it on this program. So it, it does that for you. And I want the mouse to be the Windows left control, right? When you hit apply... It gives you the code to go do that. You put in your code. So it's really, really cool. Um, and, and it updates. I can't easily pull over my system tray or I show you, but it updates the, the information in your system tray as well. Let me see if I can do that. So let me hit apply. Let me move this over here. Again, this is going to be for us to use a lot, but also for people that are creating tools. And so now if I come into the example... So see, control F1, um, oh, that'll, sorry, that'll open the settings, but uh, that's what these, so see the ABCD and BTW, that these are hot strings, right? And that first one, open settings, um, it's mouse, control, so that one looks like that hasn't updated yet, so uh, maybe I'd have to refresh this or hit save, probably hit save, right? I didn't hit save, so yeah, left win. So. That's really, really awesome, because that's not a simple thing, and that takes time. So we're building a class that will make it really easy for you guys to have that, to do that. So I'm really excited about that. We also, we thought a lot about it, and what we realized was, you know what? In Prompt Assistant, you can decide if you want to have a, a hotkey for something, or a hot string for something, or use a GUI. But usually you don't want all three of those, you want one. And that's what we decided was, you know what? Here we have a list of three, but you wouldn't. You could have one, you could have three, five, whatever you want. Uh, but really you're gonna decide, do I want to use the mouse? Do I wanna have a trigger for the keyboard or a hot string? So you're not gonna pick all of them. And once we decided that, each one of these, when you select it, it pulls up with its own new menu, a new window, that you then say, now I want this one to be based off of Explorer. Um, and, it, and it builds this for you, which is just amazing. Um, and the hot string, um, you would type your letter abbreviation, that would be my trigger, and I'd hit apply, and that would be the trigger, right? So I'm going to hit cancel instead. But you get the idea. That's freaking amazing. So hope you enjoyed this video and like it. Please like the video if you learned something and are really excited about this kind of stuff. really helps us out. If you have ideas on stuff that you, know, you think we should be working on, you can definitely mention them. You know, we, we always... We don't have a problem running out of ideas, so um, often we don't just do things right away when people suggest them, but um, I'm always happy to hear the ideas, so hope that helps. Have a great day. Cheers.